You just heard uh, that latest update on the protests, on some of the economic effects. What is this doing to the uh, investment environment in, uh, in Hong Kong and uh, I guess even the long term uh, questions of governance there? We are a foreign investor, as many investors based in Hong Kong. Typically, foreign investors don't invest in Hong Kong other than those who invest in public markets. We are a private equity investor, and therefore we invest in private companies, and we don't invest in Hong Kong uh, in the past uh, almost 20 years. So our investments are in Asia, um, in China, in Japan, in Korea, in Australia, and, and therefore uh, whatever is happening to the retail sector in Hong Kong does not affect us much at all. But to the extent that there's unrest over there, of course, that makes our life not so comfortable. Why have you not invested in Hong Kong in the past 10 years? Was it uh, something you saw about the investments there or something else? Hong Kong is a very small market. Uh, 25 years ago, Hong Kong's GDP was about 25 percent of China's. Today, it's about 2 percent. And the business is mostly dominated by properties and uh, by, I suppose, retail. So it's a relatively small market. As a private equity firm, we invest uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, sometimes billions of dollars, and therefore it's very difficult to find large buyout opportunities in Hong Kong. Uh, I mean, the, uh, obviously, it's not a perfect uh, gauge of what's happening there uh, on the ground. But, I mean, the Hang Seng Index in five months, it's down more than more than 10 percent. It seems to be weighing uh, on uh, perhaps regional sentiment. I mean, how do you fit what's happening in Hong Kong into the broader uh, kind of Asia economic uh, environment that's already being stressed by this trade war? I think the effect of the arrest in Hong Kong has on the rest of Asia will be quite limited. I think it will be largely confined to Hong Kong itself. Okay, and uh, I guess just to speak more broadly about where we are in terms of uh, the U.S.-China uh, trade negotiations, which are, are restarting, and obviously people trying to gauge the impact on, uh, on local economies all over the place. Where do you think we sit with that as an investor? How do you uh, incorporate that into your view? The trade war, of course, hurts everybody, both warring parties as well as the global economy. And therefore, from a macro point of view, all the investors are affected. And as far as we're concerned, we have focused on investing in businesses which cater to private consumption in different countries in Asia. And therefore, we are not directly affected. But uh, if the economic growth of China and the rest of Asia is affected by a trade war, we are indirectly affected. So do you not believe that uh, economic growth in those domestic economies has as yet been very affected by the trade war? No, not so much. If you look at the real effect, even on China, it's quite limited. The U.S. export to China dropped about 8% uh, last year, or about $10 billion. That's 2018. And the Chinese export to the United States last year rose, actually, about uh, 7 percent, or $34 billion. So American trade deficit with China widened by 12 percent last year. In the first eight months of this year, China's exports to, chi to the United States dropped by about uh, less than 4 percent, mm -hmm. and American exports to China dropped by about uh, 24 percent. So the trade deficit again widened by about 8 percent. So the real effect is rather yeah. limited, but the psychological effect is quite uh, noticeable. You know, people certainly are very anxious about where this trade war is headed yeah. and would like to get this thing behind them if possible.